starts right now. More than two and a half years after being indicted, an ex-constable who is charged with public corruption will finally go to court. Jury selection underway today in the trial of Michelle Barrientes Vela. The former Precinct 2 constable charged with felony tampering with evidence. Barrientes Vela arrived at court around 8.30 this morning alongside her husband. Absent the traditional group of supporters who have flanked the indicted ex-constable at her court hearings the past two years. A jury will soon begin hearing evidence accusing Barrientes Vela of knowingly falsifying payment logs for security that her office provided at Rodriguez Park. Nearly 60 people are on the current witness list, including many of her former deputies. Also, her former captain, Mark Garcia, who is indicted along with Barrientes Vela in early 2020. He will likely take the stand, too. Case that will be live streaming her trial from opening arguments until the verdict. Those opening arguments slated to begin tomorrow morning at 1030 a.m. San Antonio fire investigators say they've got a question they may not be able to answer. They say they may never know what or who started a fire that caused damage to one building of a Southside motel. It broke out after 630 this morning at the Rainbow Motel on South Presa, not too far from East South, Co South Cross. Katrina Weber reports guests got an early wake up call in the form of smoke and flames. Before the sun had come up completely, flames were casting an orange glow mixed with thick black smoke over the Rainbow Motel. Guests also were up and out, ready to run if needed. We did not have to actually evacuate anyone. I was told that the small number of uh, residents that were at this ho uh, motel were already out in the parking lot. San Antonio fire crews had scrambled to the 4700 block of South Presa after 6.30 this morning, then got right to work. They found flames already through the roof and hiding deep inside its layers. They had to break their way through shingles to make sure it was out. Also, we did have some trees and power lines nearby. Um, so, you know, at this point, the good news is it did not spread. Firefighters searched that building but didn't find anyone inside the rooms. From what other guests tell me, there wasn't anyone staying in that part of the motel. Fire crews say there also wasn't anyone hurt. Investigators believe the fire started outside the building on the back side. But due to the damage it caused, they say they can't tell exactly how it started. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A woman is in the hospital after being hit by a driver in a Nissan on the city's west side. This was around 1115 last night on Bandera Road and West Woodlawn Avenue. Police say the woman was crossing the street when she was hit. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. The driver who hit her did stop to help the woman and is not facing charges. A shooting over the night overnight on the city's east side has left two men in the hospital. The shooting happened just after 1230 on Belinda Lee, not far from East Houston Street and South W.W. White. Police say the two men in their 20s were walking when they were approached by another man, and that's when the man started shooting at him. One of the victims was grazed in the head, the other in the leg. They're both in the hospital and are expected to be OK. The suspect is still on the run. San Antonio Crime Stoppers searching for the person responsible for shooting and killing 19-year-old Jacob Pareles. It happened on his birthday six years ago on August 31st, 2016. He was found with a gunshot wound to his head in the 3600 block of Piedmont. Police say a small amount of marijuana was found near the body, and they believe that this shooting might have happened during a drug deal. Crime Stoppers says that police have interviewed several people. So far, they have no leads. If you can help officers with this case, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Looking ahead today, the Uvalde School Board meeting this evening for a grievance hearing for Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell. They will talk about grievances filed by families against Harrell over his handling of the shooting at the aftermath. The grievance hearing is set to begin at 6. Also on the agenda this week, the termination hearing for school board District Police Chief Pete Aridando. That is scheduled for Wednesday night. It's going to be open to the public. We'll have a live stream available on KSAT.com. And we've been watching what's going on uh, here across South Texas with some clouds. So we've had a, a lot of rain up to our north. We're watching the potential for some showers and storms as we get into this evening. The current situation right now, you can see the cloud cover that's been sticking around. So it's still mostly cloudy here around San Antonio. But as we look north, 
We've got some showers and storms starting to build in the hill country. And this is one area we'll watch closely later today. Meantime, up around Dallas Fort Worth, it has been a really rough go of it. They've picked up in some cases up to 10 inches of rain. There's still some rain falling. Finally, the backside of this shield of rain starting to move through, but there is still some serious flooding issues up there. Delays at the airport. There's been many high water rescues. So if you're heading up by 35, uh, just a heads up there. You can see some of the video coming out of Dallas and that was overnight and you can see the low water crossing some issues there. And as I mentioned, the several high water rescues, that's that's the kind of water you never want to drive through because it uh, usually does not end well. You can see some of the cars flipped. There's water has picked up some of those trucks. So uh, not a good situation up there. We're expecting that uh, we could get some heavier downpours here, but I don't think we'll see anything like that. Let's go back to the, the maps here and we'll show you that uh, these showers and storms again continue to spread up across uh, parts of North Texas. Frontal boundary sinks south and that's what's going to give us our chances for rain as we head later into today. Flood watch in effect for parts of the area too, including uh, the hill country as we get into this evening. And this is a widespread issue. There's been uh, more showers and storms across the country causing issues. Here's the latest. Millions of Americans under flood alerts with severe weather moving across the country. Catastrophic rain in the south. Texas slammed overnight. Seven inches falling in just three hours. In Dallas, a summer's worth of rain in one night. That's how deep the water is. Water rescues underway in the area that's been plagued by a drought. That car's underwater. Rain falling so fast, some drivers forced to abandon their cars. In New Mexico, about 150 people stuck for hours without food or water in Carlsbad Caverns National Park with roads completely flooded. Nobody knew what time we could leave. We thought maybe a couple of hours. We didn't realize we could be there all night. In Utah's Zion National Park, a desperate search underway for a missing hiker after floodwaters knocked her off her feet. So far, only her backpack has been found. The rush of water inundating roads in Moab, extremely dry terrain, making things even worse unable to absorb the water that's pounded the region over the last two days. Oh boy, look at that. This street turned into a river engulfing vehicles, including a motorcycle. a motorcycle. Video taken inside a storefront capturing the moment. They ran into each other. As much of the country deals with that torrential rain, other parts of the U.S. are facing extremely dry conditions. Oregon, Idaho, Washington, all under red flag warnings, and temperatures in the Northwest remain above average. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. More than 100,000 students headed back to school today. Northside Independent School District, the largest school district in San Antonio, kicked off the school year. Sarah Costa was at Fernandez Elementary during morning drop off and spoke with students and parents about those first day jitters. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. It's good to see you guys. Hey, welcome back. Hey, good morning, guys. First day of school energy, excitement of new teachers, friends, and some emotional. But principal of Northside ISD's Fernandez Elementary School has a message to parents who might be worried about nervous students. Just know that there's an incredible transformation that happens when your pre-K and kinder kids come to school. And what you see when maybe you drop them off, uh, those tears and that worry, it goes away so quickly. Uh, and I wish I, I wish I could just uh, take a picture and just show parents just how fast their kids adapt. PTA president of Fernandez Elementary says she has three kids and understands the tears. It's why she brought what she calls a boohoo breakfast to comfort first day parents dropping off pre-k and kindergarten students. Welcome back. I love your shirt. First day kindergarten. Is that what that says? It goes by super quick. So like I get the tears, but they're going to have so much fun here. So um, crying is excitement. Yes, but new chapter. It's also exciting too. Johnson says his favorite part of the first day of school is seeing the excitement in the students faces. Jerry, good morning. It's good to see you guys. I miss you, I miss you too, buddy. Good morning. Uh, this is a place that is truly their home away from home. And so when they go on summer vacation, it is a great time for them to be with their families, but they definitely miss school. Fourth grader Lillian Gonzalez says she remembers her first day of kindergarten. I was really scared and sad because I had to let, leave my mom and mostly every kid like that when they're really young. And now a seasoned elementary school student, she has advice for first day students. Don't worry, it's going to be an exciting class and that you'll have fun. And it definitely was nice to see those kids excited to head back to the class. We wish you guys a good year.
From Fernandez Elementary, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Dr. Anthony Fauci has announced he is leaving his role as the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and chief medical officer to President Joe Biden in December. His announcement, Fauci says he is moving into the next chapter of his career. Fauci has been with the NIAID for 38 years, first joining the Institute under President Reagan. He became one of the most prominent experts during the COVID-19 pandemic. Fauci says he is not retiring and will continue to work to help advance science and public health. The Biden administration expected to make a decision on repaying school loans soon. Education Secretary Miguel Cordona said that it could come within the next week or so. The White House has already extended the pandemic-related pause four times. The last one was back in April. The frozen payments are set to end on August 31st. While some advocates say up to $50,000 should be forgiven, the administration is suggesting a smaller break. Right now, the U.S. has $1.6 trillion worth of student debt. A local competition amping up their efforts to help young tech companies grow. How they're doing this by hosting a competition. The auto industry is rapidly changing and a local school program is getting students under the hood. About 180 high school students are part of the automotive program at NEISD's Transportation Technology Academy. Here, students learn about automotive basics and they get industry exposure. With technology changing in the auto service industry, the program is preparing students for a future. Our technology is basically um, changing every day. So with that, we're, uh, we are teaching um, hybrid and electric technology to our students. Uh, they will have an opportunity to um, learn how those systems work, how to safely operate and work on those systems and troubleshoot them at some point. About 180 high school students are part of this year's program and there is a wait list now for the academy. As we see in Port San Antonio and Geekdom, the tech community in San Antonio has witnessed a huge growth over the last five years, and there is no slowing down. Tech Fuel is a local startup pitch competition hosted by Tech Block and sponsored by Bear County Economic and Community Development Department with 100,000 in prize money. Max Massey shows us Tech Fuel is an effort to help young companies with great ideas grow. Don't fall in love with your product, fall in love with your problem, because your product will be pivoting. Your product will be led somewhere else, right? You have to just fall in love with the problem that you're going to be solving. Meet Ileana Gonzalez. She knows the local San Antonio tech sector very well. Went to UTSA, um, got really involved there. I ended up being student body president my senior year. I was an entrepreneurship major, and so I got into the pitch competitions. In part because she helped build it to where it currently stands. And when it comes to tech fuel, the idea is helping the community end helping local entrepreneurs. The support of the county has been amazing. We are so appreciative of them because I don't know of any other county that does this for entrepreneurs and their tech ecosystem. And so uh, super excited to bring it to light. Applications are now open with a deadline of September 25th. And the actual competition happens during San Antonio Startup Week. The competition day is October 21st at the Tobin Center. And just the experience itself teaches you a lot, right? Because this is a five minute pitch, five minute questions strike out or strike in, right? And so your storytelling side of um, the pitch competition is just super important. And so even going through the process teaches you so much as an entrepreneur. Ileana has seen the city grow firsthand. She helped shape it and she knows how important competitions like Tech Fuel are, not only to local companies, but to our city as a whole. Not only are we pushing San Antonio, we're pushing our state. And like I said, we are a part of that triangle. And so what it means for San Antonio is to place us in the map that there are things happening here. If you have any questions about how to apply, we have all that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside with live cam, we are so hopeful. And I got to say, yesterday... 
actually was really pleasant for San Antonio, considering the summer we've had. It's true. It wasn't bad. And we've got a lot of cloud cover right now. We're still waiting on those clouds to break up. I still think we see some sun this afternoon. It's going to get fairly warm, but we've got some relief in sight in the form of some showers and storms. Hopefully this evening coming up tomorrow as well. Aquifer is down today, two tenths of a foot to 635.1 and your pollen count. Molds are high at 1,960. Fall elm is low. We'll take a look at that potentially rainy forecast coming up. So I guess over the last, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks, we've been getting a little rain here, a little rain there, a little bitty drop here, but it's better than nothing. Well, you know, I was talking to somebody in Houston this morning, and they were talking about all the mud they have there. Ooh. Houston's been doing Not pretty fair. well as of late. What does that look like? It mud? feels like it's been teasing us and taunting us. This rain, it gets close, doesn't really move through San Antonio. Look, we have some opportunities coming up. I can't guarantee you that everyone's going to get a ton of rain out of this, but there's some good ch uh, chances uh, over the next couple of days as we get a frontal battery in here uh, starting this evening. And there'll be some pockets of heavy rain mix in there. So here's the setup. Uh, we have an area of low pressure up across uh, north central Texas. And then the very heavy rain as we showed you earlier around Dallas. And this frontal boundary is going to sink south and get a little bit closer to us. But it will take some time, probably again late this afternoon, this evening. But we already are already seeing some showers and storms across the hill country at this hour. A little closer look at Dallas once again. The rain is starting to come to an end, so things will be improving there. But it will take some time as there is a ton of water, a ton of water that has fallen uh, there over DFW. Still some delays at the airport and now some of that heavier rain is shifting south along I-35. Places like Waco uh, will get some pretty heavy rain here in the next couple of hours. Still some flash flood warnings up there and then a flood watch as uh, you work down I-35 and then into the hill country. And that's because that's one area where we think the rain may be heaviest as we get into tonight it is across the hill country. But even so, uh, we'll have to watch for a couple of uh, showers or storms that could produce some pretty heavy rain uh, around San Antonio. It's possible. And you see the cloud cover around town. These uh, clouds are beginning to break up. We're getting a lot more sun out towards you. Valley Eagle Pass, sunny skies now. Gonzalez seeing uh, some partly cloudy skies. And here's a look at the forecast. By 6 p.m., showers and storms entering the hill country and then getting a little bit closer to San Antonio by 8, 9 o'clock this evening. And uh, sticking around potentially even into tonight. We'll have to watch for some of these storms depending on where this front kind of sets up. That's going to be the tough part is determining exactly where we get some of the, the, the heavier rain, but it will be around. And I think going into tomorrow morning, we'll still see some showers around and the potential is there for more showers and storms coming up tomorrow. Hit or miss type stuff. It's not going to rain all day by any stretch of the imagination, but there is again some chances there with this frontal boundary around and we also have some pretty deep moisture in place. So the rainfall potential as it stands right now, probably some lower amounts, less than half an inch. You go south to San Antonio along Highway 90, I-10, half an inch, maybe up to an inch and a half here around town. And then you'll find some higher totals up across the hill country with the biggest totals and the heaviest rain across northeast Texas, where they've already seen quite a bit of rain. Case at 12 hour forecast, small chances through about 4 p.m. Then we start to bring the rain chances up a little bit, 40%. And by the way, we still make it up to 95 today, so it will still be hot and humid. Uh, rain chances continue into tonight. We'll keep about a 50% chance going, and that goes into tomorrow as well. Uh, we'll call for a 50% chance of rain. 89 tomorrow, so that is a difference with uh, temperatures. 89 Wednesday, 50% chance of rain. Still some chances Thursday, 40% chance. Even on Friday, I think we still have some isolated stuff, but the, the rain begins to taper off as we head into the weekend. We'll be watching that front closely today. We'll keep you updated. Uh, we could also see one or two strong storms. I, ne I need to mention that. Nothing uh, widespread as far as severe weather goes, but a couple strong storms possible, and then we'll see some pockets of heavy rain. The KSAT weather app will be there for you. We'll keep you updated and let you know if anything's headed your way, guys. One thing won't happen. Probably won't hit 100. I don't think so. No, not this week. Imagine that. Yeah. A look at another one of the KSAT Pigskin Classic Showdowns this Saturday, coming up next. The KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022, presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers, will kick off Saturday in the Dome. And the primetime game to end the triple header 
It's going to be between the Steel Knights and the Brennan Bears. While it's important for every team to start their season off right with a win, there's something special about playing in prime time in the Alamo Dome with all eyes on the marquee matchup, not just here in San Antonio, but all over Texas. It's definitely like a Monday night football feel, uh, having the all eyes on us, everybody across, uh, across the state, some people outside state, family, friends. It's amazing, and the support that we have for Steel is immaculate. You know, I've grown up watching Monday night football and, you know, football in the NFL and stuff like that, but, um, you know, especially college football, it's different. Knowing all those people are going to be there in the atmosphere it's going to be in, um, especially being at 7 o'clock, you know, the last game of the three-header. Um, so it'll definitely be cool. It'll be a cool feeling. All right, so here's a look at the, all three of those matchups and the nightcap 730 Steel and Brennan. All those young men and all the bands and all the cheerleaders, they are all pumped up to be playing in the Alamo Dome. And there's some things that you need to know before you head down to the Dome. You can read about it on our website, KSAT Pigskin Classic on KSAT.com. And just a reminder on some of those things, there's a clear bag you can't uh, you have to have a clear bag when you come in you can't bring alcohol bottles flasks, noisemakers those are just a few of the things that you cannot take into the dome saturday and once again the full list all you gotta do is scan that qr code right there and you can get that full list of all the things you need to know before you come down there and another reminder you can still get your tickets to the case at pigskin classic at any las palapas locations and if you have kids attending steel brennan justin johnson smithson valley or reagan you can contact the school directly to purchase some tickets. And you're going to see a lot of familiar faces when you go down to the Alamo Dome. I'm planning on being there Saturday be there. afternoon. Going to be there, right? Yeah. I think I'm going to be, I'm going to watch the second game. The second one? Mm -hmm. That is just going to be an outstanding day for high school football. If you are just a, just a generic fan, mm -hmm. you want to come on down. It's going to be fun. Coming up in the next half hour, a look at UK's four day work week. Wouldn't that be nice? How one company is managing the short work week with a new system. And inflation has not only raised costs and necessities, but also raising a child. We'll explain how coming up. A murder investigation now underway in Russia after a car bomb near Moscow killed the daughter of a prominent ally of Vladimir Putin. Daria Dugina died on Saturday night after the vehicle she was driving exploded. A Russian official has implied Ukraine may be responsible, but Ukraine is strongly denying that. CNN's Fred Plekin reports it's also possible the woman wasn't the primary target. A car engulfed in a massive fireball on a highway outside Moscow. Police say the vehicle exploded and then crashed, the driver dead on the scene. That driver was Daria Dugina, a well-known commentator and supporter of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, who was sanctioned by the United States and by the UK. She was also the daughter of prominent right-wing ideologue Alexander Dugin, who promotes Russian expansionism. According to Russian state media, an explosive device detonated Saturday night, setting the vehicle on fire. Russia has opened a criminal investigation. The investigative committee says they believe Dugina was murdered. Taking into account the data already obtained, the investigation believes that the crime was pre-planned and of an ordered nature, a statement said. While forensic work continued, the foreign ministry implied that Ukraine may be behind the attack. If the Ukrainian trace is confirmed, Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zaharova wrote on Telegram, then we should talk about the policy of state terrorism implemented by the Kiev regime. The Ukrainians deny any involvement. I emphasize that Ukraine definitely has nothing to do with this because we are not a criminal state, which the Russian Federation is, and even more so, we are not a terrorist state. <laughs> But some in Russia believe Daria Dugina wasn't the actual target of the explosion, but rather her father. Alexander Dugin, also sanctioned by the U.S., remains highly influential in Russia as he calls for the annexation of large parts of Ukraine. An ultra-conservative philosopher and TV personality with roots in the Orthodox Church, he's a champion of Russian expansionism, some claiming he may have influenced Vladimir Putin's decision to further invade Ukraine. In 2014, Dugin said Russia must, quote, kill, kill, and kill the people running Ukraine and that there should be no more discussion. 
Daria Dugina was 29 years old when she was killed. Russian investigators say they are frantically working to find those responsible. Fred Plekin, CNN, Moscow. The former prime minister of Pakistan is in trouble by way of the anti-terror law. Iman Khan is being investigated by authorities for allegedly violating the country's anti-terror laws. The government has also banned him from speaking live on television, accusing him of spreading hate through his statements. According to a police document, the investigation was open after Khan vowed to, quote, take action against the head of police and a female magistrate. Khan was not, has not been arrested and is yet to give the public a comment. Some businesses are finding some interesting ways to see if a four-day work week is a good choice for their personnel. One London public relations firm, Unity, is finding out there is a way to make sure that all the work is completed in four days instead of the regular five. The company is using what they call a traffic system. They simply have this button that they push. It turns red, and that means do not disturb the employee. It also allows the employee to get their work done without any distractions or interruptions. Unity has limits on meeting times, and it is strict about how it hands over work between the teams, some of whom are off on Mondays and others are off on Fridays. It was really, really simple. In fact, we were in the middle of the pandemic. I was so afraid for myself, but also for the team that we were just burning out really, really quickly. And I started thinking about ways to help with this. There are 70 companies across the UK participating in this four day work week schedule and they are two months into it. A 29 year old's gun went off injuring multiple people inside a Clayton County Walmart. Police say Michael Walton handled mishandled a gun when it discharged inside the store hitting Walton. It ricocheted and then hit three other people. None of the injuries were life threatening. Police say Walton will be charged with reckless conduct. Taking a look outside with a live cam, lots of cloud cover, 87 degrees out there. But what it's what's going to happen later on tonight, and tomorrow, that's got our interest. Yeah, we're watching the radar closely, too, because we can see some of those showers and storms starting to take shape over the hill country. Some lightning strikes associated with these. We could see one or two strong storms today and then maybe some pockets of heavier rain as we get into tonight, especially across the hill country. But there's a look at the live radar and you see where that action is up there around junction at this hour. Some pretty good lightning strikes there. And in general, we're starting to see this area kind of build and become a little more widespread as it works slowly along I-10 here in that frontal boundary somewhere in there. And that's what is giving lift to these showers and storms this afternoon. Here's a look at some of the weather headlines. We've had a lot of clouds this morning. We'll lose some of those as we head into the afternoon. And temperatures will eventually reach the mid 90s along with a lot of humidity. After 4 p.m., the front brings in some scattered showers and storms and we'll see those become a little more numerous as we head into the evening hours and then there is some deep moisture in place, meaning that some places could see heavy rain at the moment. 86 degrees, dew point is at 73, feels like 93. Our rain chances this evening start to pick up after 5 o'clock. We'll put in a 40 to 50 percent chance of rain during the evening and overnight hours. More on this, more on what's going on across Texas as well. That's coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. The cost of raising a child through high school has you guessed it, it's gone up thanks to inflation. For married middle income couples, it now takes on average, I hate this number, $310,605 to raise a child born in 2015 through the age of 17. This is according to the Brookings Institute based on numbers from the U.S. Agriculture Department. The estimate includes a range of child expenses, including food, health care, clothing, child care and activities. Back in 2015, a government projection put the total child raising cost at just $233,000. Monkeypox has been identified for the first time in someone under 18 in New York State. Last month, the CDC identified at least two cases of monkeypox in children. CDC says when it comes to children, the virus could be spread through holding, feeding and cuddling. It can also possibly spread through contaminated clothing and bedding. The CDC now saying monkeypox vaccines are being made available for children through special expanded protocols. While mental health and suicide are often linked, researchers say that many cases of suicide happen among people without any mental health conditions. With more on that, here's ABC's M. Wynn. 
A majority of boys and men who die by suicide don't have any known mental health conditions. Researchers at the CDC looked at 70,000 males across different age groups who died by suicide between 2016 and 2018. They found 60% did not have a known mental illness. Family problems were the most common stressor experienced by adolescents who died by suicide, while relationships and intimate partner problems affected young and middle-aged adults. Alcohol and substance use were not considered mental health diagnoses in this study. Many of the age groups showed a significant history of problematic substance use. And about 45% of young and middle-aged adults tested positive for alcohol at the time of their death. Suicide is a leading cause of death in the United States, with an estimated one death every 11 minutes, according to the CDC. If you or someone you know needs help, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or 911. With this Medical Minute, I'm Emwin, ABC News. Still coming up this half hour, how Africa managed to get Wi-Fi onto one of their highest peaks. Hello everyone, these are your top headlines for Cheddar News. Over the weekend, Apple discovered a serious security issue that could allow hackers to take complete control of your device. Apple's advising users to immediately update iPhone 6S and later models, several models of the iPad, and Macs running on the Monterey operating system. The flaw also affects some iPod models as well. Meanwhile, Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced a 25% increase for the company's premium driver assistance system on Sunday. It's marketed under the name Full Self Driving, or FSD, Musk tweeting that the price price increase will be now $15,000 starting on September the 5th. Tesla had charged customers $12,000 for FSD or $199 a month on a subscription basis. And the SpaceX Dra Dragon cargo ship returned to Earth on Saturday, splashing down off the coast of Florida. The uncrewed spacecraft returned with about 4,000 pounds of science gear. The month-long mission was part of a multi-billion dollar contract with NASA. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. If a lack of internet access was keeping you from climbing Count, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, you are in luck. The highest peak in Africa now has Wi-Fi. Who knew you needed it there? Tanzania's Information Ministry has installed high-speed internet to serve all the climbers on the mountain. Right now, the coverage is good up to 12,000 feet, which provides coverage for about two-thirds of the mountain. Who knew? I, <laughs> I'd like to be the guy who meet the guy who carried it up there. Marvel's newest hero using her powers in a very different way in She-Hulk, attorney at law. Rick Damagella has the latest on the new show. Still in control, no overwhelming feelings of rage. No, a normal amount of rage. There's a new Hulk in town in She-Hulk, attorney at law. So I'm clearly nailing it at all of these things. When am I ever going to use this as a lawyer? If you're unfamiliar with the character, Jennifer Walters is Bruce Banner's cousin. After an accident causes her to attain Hulk powers from Bruce, Jennifer becomes She-Hulk. She-Hulk Attorney at Law is about a modern woman juggling a career, a family, friends, um, and she also happens to be a Hulk. I am a lawyer. We do things by the book. Come on, the book of the Shanty. No, the book of American uh, laws. I love that we're taking these like huge characters that you normally are so used to seeing saving the universe, you know, the fate of humanity being at stake, like these huge, huge events. And then really just cutting all of that away and, and saying like, well, what happens on just like a normal day when the universe isn't in danger? Who's your best friend? Nikki. Eh, spandex. We wanted to make sure that Nikki was was fun and like this this instigator and a catalyst who's constantly trying to stir up a bunch of trouble. Jen, do your thing. God, I really like this outfit. You know, She-Hulk is the first superhero we've really seen who really doesn't want to be one. You could be an Avenger. Oh, I'm not a superhero. That is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason. Hulking out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. That looks fun. Yeah. It would be really fun if when we pull up live cam next week, all this is green. <laughs>
Oh, it'd be so nice. As we said, this summer has been rough on us, and then it feels like every time we do get rain chances, it somehow works its way, uh, you know, uh, away from San Antonio. We ha we haven't got a whole lot as of late, but we're hoping for some decent rain tonight. Uh, at least there is a chance there. 86 so far today. The record is 103 say back in 1948. We're not getting in the triple digits. It stays below that number, and we got some cooler weather on the way too. That forecast is coming up. Yeah, we were just talking about all that rain in Dallas that yes. uh, has, it's still raining in, I guess, in East Dallas. It's, it's just amazing how all around us yep. it has rained really nicely. Yes. Even up in the hill country. <laughs> well, well, yeah, we're starting to see some there. And, and Dallas has picked up just a ton of rain. Some estimates over 10 inches. They set a record for most rain in a one-hour period there at DFW, over three inches just in one hour. Uh, so they've been dealing with a ton of heavy rain up there. Some of that moisture is working south along the frontal boundary, and so the hope is that we will get some rain, uh, maybe some good rain around. We don't want the flooding, but some, some soaking rain would be nice. Let's take a look at the time lapse. We had uh, clouds this morning, and uh, we continue to see quite a bit of cloud cover right now, although these clouds are trying to break up. We've seen some peaks of sun here and there, 86 degrees at the airport. South southwesterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. We're at 86 in Kerrville, 85 Uvalde, 93 Creosote Springs, 91 Pleasanton, 91 in Gonzales. So there is still some heat there combined with humidity. Uh, and once these clouds break, I think we'll get some 90s here around Bear County before that front comes in and then tomorrow it will be cooler. Dew points are in the mid 70s. It's extremely sticky. And as we've been talking about, it's humid here where we are at the surface, but all the way up to the atmosphere, there is a ton of humidity. So that's why anything that develops is going to be a very efficient rain producer. Here's the setup. We have area of low pressure here across central Texas, frontal boundary there that's starting to sink south. And it is along that boundary where we should see development today. And then uh, Dallas also along that boundary seeing some very heavy rain with still flash flood warnings up there. Flood watch extends down I-35 into the hill country. We think the hill country is in line to probably see the most rain here over the next uh, 24 hours or so. But uh, again, anywhere we see one of those heavier storms, there is going to be uh, some good rainfall with it and some good rainfall rates. Here's the uh, live radar and we'll zoom in a little bit closer. And we're starting to see this uh, line along this boundary starting to kind of feel fill in here from Mason, Mason County back down towards uh, Junction there in Kimball County and over towards Rock Springs where we're getting some pretty good looking thunderstorms. So if you're watching from Rock Springs this afternoon, uh, beware, there's uh, there's going to be some good rain within these uh, cells and then you'll get some lightning strikes. Again, we're not looking for a lot of severe weather here, but I can't rule that out either. Some gusty winds perhaps with some of these uh, stronger storms, but this line will continue to fill in and should work its way uh, east and southeast. And that's what we're going to watch throughout the rest of the afternoon. There is that severe risk I mentioned. It's isolated. So this is low end on a scale of one to five, just about a one, but it is something we need to keep tabs on. Here's the forecast and it shows that front dropping south showers and storms around six o'clock. Better chance perhaps as we get into this evening, eight, nine o'clock, uh, expecting some good downpours. And then uh, even into the overnight hours, we're gonna have to watch where this front stalls out and we could get some more development tomorrow morning. There could be some rain around for the morning commute and still some showers and storms by tomorrow afternoon, all of which uh, again, could be heavy at times. Case set 12 hour forecast, 92, 2 o'clock, 94, 3 p.m. And by 7, 8 o'clock, 40% chance of rain. We'll top out in the 90s, but temperatures fall into the 80s tonight with a 50% chance of showers and storms. And tomorrow, at this point, we think we'll probably stay in the 80s. More chances Wednesday and Thursday, too. Things start to dry out Friday, and the weekend looks drier. But uh, yes, this week, looking much more active than we've seen most of the summer. We'll be right back. We did well at 100, but this is surpassing 100. On a day meant for scattered showers, the clouds parted. I can't, I can't believe that the sun came out. For a woman who's been celebrated on August 21st. Happy birthday. For the past 103 years. Well, perhaps I better get bed, better prepared to get to heaven having so much fun now. And on her birthday, Loyola University Chicago honoring its basketball chaplain, Sister Jean. It is about saying thank you. As she was greeted by a chorus of family, friends, and supporters on campus where her legacy will be on full display. 
near this red line stop on campus, now called the Sister Jean CTA Plaza. And to dedicate the plaza, that's, that's something very special. Well, I'll come more frequently, I know that. I know that for sure. Donned in her maroon and gold, whether off or on the sidelines cheering for the Ramblers, her impact goes well beyond the court as an educator and mentor. You have graced the lives of generations of students. And with her secrets of longevity. Well, I eat well, I pray well, I hope I pray well, and I sleep well. Her impact will hopefully stay in arm's reach for more years to come. And of course, I have to say what the others did. Go Ramblers. Yeah. Great story. Sister Jean. 103 years old and still cheering on Loyola. Love that. Speaking of cheering on. <laughs> yes, we are counting down to the KSAT Pigskin Classic this week. Yes, and here to help us kick off those celebrations are three fabulous alpacas. Cute. Poncho, Lefty, and Waylon there in the middle and Loretta Hayevsky, owner of Texas Party Animals. All right, now, Poncho and Lefty are gonna help us determine the prediction of the KSAT Pigskin Classic. They right? are, they are wearing bandanas that have the school logos on it, and they are gonna have a fun eating competition, and the winner will be the prediction for the game. All right, and there's also a competition for America's favorite pet, and Waylon is in the running for that, the one here in the middle, right? The one in the middle, Waylon. Mm -hmm. Waylon the alpaca is running for America's favorite pet, um, it's a $10,000 prize and also a two-page centerfold and in-style magazine. Nice. Uh, yeah. All right. Voting right. begins today and we appreciate your vote. All right. We're going to tell you how you can vote. Also, get ready to grub down. 375 Kitchen is a brand new restaurant and we are going to get a taste of how they're serving up Asian, Mexican cuisine and more. All right. We're also taking you to one of the practices at Brennan High School as they prepare for the big KSAP Pigskin Classic. That and much more coming up on SA Live. Right, temperatures in the upper 80s right now. We make it into the 90s today, but we're watching the radar very closely. Some pockets of heavy rain tonight, especially in the Hill Country, and then working their way down towards San Antonio a little bit later today. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey, meteorologist Adam Kasky will be here to keep you up to date. So will the KSAT weather app. We've got more chances coming up next few days of some uh, scattered showers and storms, some of which could produce some heavy rain. Guys. That is the prettiest forecast I think of. I've seen in years. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Looking forward to the alpaca picks. See, they, did you see the one laying down? They with the, um, are very cool looking. Yeah. The, Too the, cool for school. The Reagan one was like taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest of them were eating. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> okay. It's live animals on SA Live, and it starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello and happy Monday. What better way to kick off the week than with a cuteness overload? <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Jen Tobias Jeske. That's Poncho right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Fiona Gorostiza. All right, well, it might be a manic Monday for some folks because a lot of kids today was their yes. first day of school, right? Yes, Northside, Southwest, and Somerset. So there's my kiddos, and they headed Aww. off today. Tutu and Rai Rai. Yep, and then you have one too. And they're ah. Sloan. Off to school. Oh, really? I know. oh my goodness, it goes by so fast. So we want to see your does. photos. Share them so we can maybe share them here on the show. You can tag us at SA Live KSAT on Facebook or Twitter. Yes, all right. Well, did you know there's a competition for America's favorite pet? I'll bet you didn't know a South Texas alpaca could be the winner. Loretta Hayeski, owner of Texas Party Animals, is here to tell us how that you can help Waylon here in the middle to be the America's favorite pet. Yes, uh, Waylon the alpaca is, today is the competition for America's favorite pet, and he is in the running uh, for this year's competition. Uh, the prize is $10,000, and it runs through the end of October. There's several levels of competition, but today is day one, and voting just began. So, so who, who's he up against? Do we even know yet? We do not know who he is up against yet. Uh, that will come out as soon as the uh, list is out there. 
Wow. It could be, it could be over 10,000 entries. Wow. So and $10,000 is the prize. $10,000 is the prize and a two-page spread in InStyle magazine. Which he could totally be. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah. can't you see that? Wow. So voting already started today. And today. you can vote uh, multiple times? Uh, one time per day per okay. email address. Okay. okay. Got it. All right. Now, we are going to have our own competition today. And the alpacas here are going to help. The KSAT Pigskin Classic is happening this weekend and six local high school football teams are going head to head and the alpacas here are going to help us predict the winner with their alpaca picks all right each alpaca representing a team and whoever finishes the food first will be the winner all right so we've got poncho and lefty who are going to be helping yes, us out yes and as you can see on their bandanas are the logos of each of the teams uh, that they will be representing. First up, the Smithson Valley Rangers versus the Reagan Rattlers. The match kicks off at 11.30 this Saturday, but right now, the alpacas will decide. So All right, you ready? Whoever finishes this alpaca snack first. Here we go. Three, oh, two, oh, one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. we had a little advantage here. Oh yeah, you're all right, they were hungry. All right, let's see. Okay, oh, we're going. You might want to speed, speed up a little bit, do a little faster. Okay, here we go. Yep, we're still going. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 there we go. Okay. All right, All right Poncho's the winner of that one. You got the winner over okay. there. All right. So let's see. All right, next the Judson Rockets versus in a second versus the <laughs> Johnson Jaguars. They match. They match up, and it kicks off at 3:30 uh, this Saturday. All right, let's let the alpacas decide. Go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh yeah, I think he got the hang of this now. It's going quicker. Almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Set. All right, I think we Go got a winner. We got a winner. Yeah. All right, here I, I'll save save the last one for you. For, for and longer. third, okay. the Steel Knights versus the Brennan Bears. The matchup kicks off 7:30 p.m. this Saturday. All right. Three, we got this. Two, Ready? One. Go. Come on, go. Lefty. Yes, you got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they were warming up. I think. Oh, yeah, they know now. This <laughs> intense competition. Almost done. I should have thrown some out. You got this. Oh, yeah, you're winning over there. Come on. You got yeah. this. Come, come on. on. Come on. Now, Loretta, are they always pretty hungry? Uh, for the most part, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, we're almost done here. I think you're winning, Fiona. Oh, no, maybe I, I don't know. <laughs> it seems pretty close as we come pretty down. Pretty close. To Getting okay. down to it. Here we go. We shall see. Come on. <laughs> I'm tilting the glass trying to help you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're almost done. We're oh. almost done. Oh, I think we got a winner over there. Yep. Yes. Yep. yes. Yay. Yay. Good job, Lefty. Here, you can have the rest. There's like baby All crumbs right. there. Loretta, tell us a little bit, of course, about Texas Party Animals. Thank well, you. my company's four years old. It's a women-run business. I specialize in trained alpacas for weddings, parties, high-end events, corporate events. It's a lot of fun. They all, uh, they have about 100 <laughs> costumes to choose from, so we have costumes for every occasion. And uh, one of ooh. the most unusual uh, events, I guess you could say, something that you didn't expect for people to request? The well, uh, marriage proposals. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the guy comes in with an alpaca, gets down on one knee, Aww. she says yes, and then the second alpaca comes in with a server that serves champagne to everybody Cuteness. that was there to celebrate for that marriage proposal. Cuteness overload. And how many do you have now? Currently I have nine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Willie Whalen and the boys because I'm always on the road again. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, love it. All right. Now people have to just, I mean, have incredible reactions when they see the alpacas, right? Um, it's pretty amazing. We've had everything from just People just laughing to full on tears. Aww. <laughs> I've seen some of the wedding photos, right? Because yeah. they do make their appearances there. They as well. do. Um, they make their appearances and they actually, part of the service sometimes, walk with the flower girl or in a tuxedo and top hat and walk with the bride. All right. Well, again, voting starts today for America's favorite pet. And if you'd like to vote for Waylon, there is a link on our website. All right. Yeah, and good all you luck have to, to do Waylon. is head to salive.com and click on the as seen. On SA Live tab. Thank you, Poncho, Thank Lefty, you. Wayland, and so cute. Loretta. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, we are counting down, as we mentioned, to the KSAT Pigskin Classic this weekend. Yes, there's so much work that goes into putting on these halftime shows for the bands, including lots of repetition, lots of practice, and, of course, teamwork. So I went out to Brennan High School to check out what a band practice is like. Take a look.
Bears marching band has become one of the premier marching bands, not just in San Antonio, but in the entire Lone Star State. Opening in 2010, they have maintained a tradition of excellence. We came out to one of their practices today right. to see what keeps the band in tune. successful and it is but like I see like the behind the scenes and like the practices and the work and all the you know like the grind that we have to do behind the scenes so the success is just part of it. Hey guys I, I know it's uh, a little funny to forget but I'm afraid someone's gonna get hurt if you keep that up. Three a day practices in the Texas summer heat. Not out of the ordinary for a band that's on a mission. This year, it's more than just a stadium of onlookers, as if that wasn't enough pressure. Practices recently have been going by like so much more efficient and you can just tell that everyone's in a different mindset because we're just like, we have in mind the Alamo Dome and okay, it's gonna be broadcast. We have to be ready to put something out on the field. Cause I mean, nobody wants to embarrass themselves. <laughs> Adjust, that was a lot better compared to a phone. It was a lot better. It's a lot of excitement, but it's also a lot of hours. And I think the first thing that we we always tell parents is like, hey, uh, once it gets to be August, we're gonna take them. Don't worry about them. You know, um, you'll drop them off in the morning, and you'll see them once uh, when the evening gets home, and they're gonna be so tired, uh, they'll go straight to sleep. This is a great group of kids. This is our what we call the BMB. Uh, this is our varsity marching band, and just something that uh, obviously, you know, they're out here. It's, it's getting to be about sunset, and we're already working hard. Uh, we're just, we've been doing this for about three weeks of summer. We're such a new school, we're only like about 10 years old, uh, that our only tradition really is just that we try to be better than we were the last time. The practice is still going as we're talking right now, but that is something that goes into putting in all the hard work and the performances that we're going to see, you know, case at right. Classic. Right. For those who are not aware of how much goes into this, can you sum up all the work that they put in, that you put in, the whole team? Oh, wow. So the full team, you know, we're, we're here in the second to last week of July with our student leaders. Uh, we did a leadership camp with drum majors and section leaders where they actually learned to teach their peers. Uh, and because the group is so large, we actually try to uh, empower the students to be leaders and teachers amongst themselves. So we do a lot of student leadership. And that's what we're focusing on that first week. And then by week two, the last week of July, we're bringing students in and we're doing fundamentals. You know, this is how we're going to move. This is how we're going to play. And making sure that they get ready. And then come August 1st, what you're seeing right now, which is where they're learning drill and, and getting the show prepared prepared for things like our kickoff game here versus Steel at the Alamo Dome. Being able to see like the finished product and like everything come together and be with the music, it's definitely like something like, oh, okay, it made it worth it. Like the heat and the long practices and everything like that, yeah. And the beat will go on at the KSAT Pigskin Classic happening this Saturday at the Alamo Dome. For more information, head over to EssayLive.com, click the As Seen on Essay Live tab, or scan the QR code on your screen. I know, <laughs> they put so much work into it. Now the theme of their show is the City of Lights, which is Paris inspired, so they'll have the props and all the things to go along with it. Don't forget, this Saturday is the first ever KZ Pigskin Classic, brought to you by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Six local high school football teams are going head to head and you can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. The fun kicks off at 11 a.m. and your SA Live team will be a part of the action, so don't miss it. All right, still ahead on the show, Guess what, guys? You can trade in a pair of your own jeans and get $20 off a new pair. We're going to tell you how, and we've got some tips on what you should look for when shopping for jeans this season. Mm, yeah, fall's coming up. But first, it's a brand new restaurant in town. We're getting a taste of how they're mixing Asian and Mexican cuisine. I hope you're hungry. Next on SA Live.